Boa tarde a todos vocês, bem-vindos a mais uma sessão nossa do Maker Day Brasil 2021, Green Edition. Boa tarde, irmão Vander, tudo bom? Boa tarde, Saralina, boa tarde, Daniela. Muito legal, a gente está começando a nossa segunda sessão, como disse Soraya, Green Edition, aqui para o Maker Day Brasil. Se você não conhece o Maker Day Brasil, este evento está acontecendo em 24 cidades no Brasil, em American Space, em centros binacionais, é a quarta edição, então se você não conhecia, se prepare yes. porque a gente estamos na quarta edição, entrando já para o calendário nacional de um evento aberto, gratuito, que explora a curiosidade, que explora a, 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 o trabalho colaborativo. Enfim, Dani, boa tarde para você, Rainha. Dani, você tá Cadê, amiga? <risos> oh, meu Deus, até hoje não aprende. Gente, <risos> boa tarde. Feliz demais estar aqui com vocês, apresentando aqui a nossa super Super facilitadora da tarde, hein, Wanda? Quem vai estar hoje? Hoje gente tem uma surpresa aí hoje, né? Mas deixa eu só falar uma coisinha assim, ó. Ah. Baker Day é fruto de um movimento aí de 24 centros binacionais espalhados pelo Brasil, numa ação simultânea. Tá todo mundo rodando evento hoje. Depois vocês deem uma olhadinha no site do Maker Day Brasil para ver outras sessões, em parceria com o apoio da Embaixada Americana da Embaixada dos Estados Unidos aqui no Brasil. E a gente teve um convidado muito especial de manhã, foi o Natan Rabinovich. Beijo, Natan, obrigada por ter se juntado a nós. E agora temos outro convidado muito especial, né, amiga? Amiga, eu queria que você apresentasse esse convidado especial de hoje à tarde. Porque, Ai. assim, é muito fruto, né, das suas intenções aí, das suas... <risos> né? Sora, obrigada, é um prazer. A Jasmine, ela é uma ilustradora, uma mulher da área de STEAM. Ela faz, assim, projetos maravilhosos no Twitter, né, na comunidade de Twitter. Agitou todos os makers enclausurados em 2020, querendo achar amigos para brincar. E foi assim que eu achei a Jasmine. Cheguei até o website dela, me apaixonei pelas ilustrações, pelo livro que ela ainda vai lançar e já vai dar aí uma palhinha para a gente. E sem mais delongas, né? Com vocês. Welcome, a nossa Jasmine. Querida, Jasmine Florentine. Com você, querida. With you, Jasmine. Welcome. Você disse essa parte. So, should I get started? Or yes, yeah. Yeah. take the well, stage. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I, as for those of you who already understood the Portuguese, I'm Jasmine Florentine. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer, illustrator, and author. And like more than anything, I guess I'm just a maker and I really enjoy um, STEM and getting kids and just people in general excited about STEM. Um, and uh, yeah, let me just, I guess, introduce a little bit about, I'll share screen to show some of the stuff. I think some of you already know me and have probably seen some of this. Uh, actually, before I share screen, let me just mention one more thing. So I, um, normally I'm, I'm living in Israel, which is where all of my projects are currently sitting. And so I would love to have been able to show you all the projects in person, but they, I'm currently in the U.S. and there is no way a bunch of paper robots and cardboard things were going to survive the plane ride without getting squashed. So, um, so let's start. So I cheated for the about me. I literally just put a link to my website. Um, but yeah, like I said, so my background is in mechanical engineering. Um, and I've always really loved combining art with engineering. Um, so like a lot of the stuff I have worked on has tended to be kind of in this intersection of like uh, technology, but also making things look nice. And I worked for a while at First Robotics, um, which for those of you who don't know, but are interested in robotics is a student competition that gets them interested in, in robots and engineering and all that. And while I was there, I was building these, um, these, I was helping build these, the fields and got to do all kinds of like artistic things along with the engineering, which for me is really fun. Um, I also mentioned that I'm an illustrator. So I do a lot of drawing um, just for fun and, and now more recently for books as well. Um, and the other thing is 
more recently, I wrote a book, which um, bad news. Is, so I can't, first of all, I should mention the, the cover art here, the beautiful cover art. It's not done by me. It's done by another illustrator, Ebony Glenn, who's really amazing. Um, this book was unfortunately postponed because of COVID, so it won't be coming out for another year. But part of the reason I started writing is because I wanted to find a way to use stories to get kids interested in engineering. And so um, the kinds of stories that I tell this book and future projects that I can't talk about yet um, generally are all about kind of making the characters build cool things um, in the context of a story. And so I'm very much a huge fan of like combining STEM and tinkering and stories. Um, and then the, the one other thing is just, I've been doing, especially over lockdown, I started playing a lot with um, paper robots. And that was just because I didn't have access to machine shop or 3D printer or maker space. And um, also a lot of other people don't either. So I kind of wanted to show that there's lots of things you can do that don't need to be using like really high tech tools. Um, so let me stop the share for a moment, or do I want to stop the share? Sorry, I put together this presentation. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll stop for a moment just so I can, oh, right, I can't actually see you guys because the cameras are all off. <laughs> it was very strange. Um, so in terms of stories, I wanted to kind of wrap back to that because that's a big part of what I do. Um, and there's really like, I guess the first thing is there's no like right or wrong way to combine stories and STEM. Like I've seen people do in all kinds of amazing ways. Um, so what I'm describing is just sort of my personal approach. And so I think of it as kind of two different things is one is using projects as a part of the story. So like with the book I wrote and upcoming projects, um, it's more like you've got narrative. Uh, I will go back to sharing the screen. Sorry that I keep swapping back and forth there. Um, so something like this, which is just a screenshot where you've got a story and the characters are building projects as part of that story. So in this case, it's just a little snapshot of a character who's made a booby trap using like a, a micro bit and touch sensing and stuff like that. Um, and the other approach I like to use for stories is also using, so if this is using projects as part of the stories. There's also using the project to tell the story itself. And so a lot of like the, the paper robot stuff that I do tends to be very, um, very simple stories. Like, you know, they're, they're, they're not very, I'm not, you know, it's not like a, a book where you've got a once upon a time and a middle and a happy ending. It's just, um, you know, in this case, it's a very simple story of like, there's this little robot and if you tickle his foot, he like starts to wave his hands or, you know, this, this little octopus um, is telling a story as well. And so um, the thing is about this, the, the story element is like stories are also kind of, it, um, it's a very open term, right? So in some ways, just the act of transforming like, you know, paper and like, you know, straws and a motor into a character is already telling a story. The story that we're trying to tell um, for instance, with the bicycle that I posted to Twitter, for anybody who hasn't seen that, um, the story I'm telling here is just that this is, oops, put that real quick. So I'll get more back to like the specifics of how I made that the mechanism. But I guess what I'm trying to say is even that it's not a story in the traditional sense of like, it's not a character or something, but it's still a story in the sense that I'm trying to convince you or anybody watching this, that this isn't just a collection of cardboard and sticks and paper, but this is actually a bicycle. Um, and so I think that the, 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 the term story is going to be very broad in the way I use it. Um, so the other thing is I mentioned that I'm a mechanical engineer and that, uh, I, I try to bring a lot of that into my projects. Um, so I tend to think a lot about mechanisms. And one thing I especially like doing is thinking about 
how I can take um, traditional engineering mechanisms like you know gears and motors and things like that and how I can adapt them into materials I have at home like cardboard and like paper. And a lot of the time I'm thinking around mechanisms sort of um, both like in a backwards and a forwards way. So for instance, with the, the figure skater I have here um, on the far right, I started that by saying, I want to make a figure skater. And this was actually for um, a Twitter challenge that was doing the micro bit virtual Olympics, which is really cool. Um, and I know it's the summer Olympics, but figure skating is my favorite Olympic sport. So I went with that. So I had this idea first of this is the story I want to tell. And then based on that, figured out what is the mechanism I uh, want to use to tell that story. And based on that, figured out like how I'm going to actually build it. But then sometimes I'll also go the other way. Sometimes uh, like with this octopus, I started with, I really want to make uh, an octopus, uh, not an octopus. I really want to make something that uses a motor to, to, um, to make eight, or multiple pieces of paper move at once. Because with the, the tickle bot, you've got like one arm and one motor and it waves around. And with this, um, you've got, I go to the, you've got eight tentacles all moving together. I think I will show that. So I actually started with just this idea of, I want to move multiple pieces of, of paper or something together. And based on that said, oh, you know, maybe I'll make an octopus. Octopuses have eight legs. Um, and then from there, it was sort of like, okay, so what is the story I'm trying to tell with this octopus? Why is this octopus pulling their tentacles in? Um, maybe they're shy or maybe they're angry. And then kind of based on that, use that to figure out like, what is the, um, what is the input I'm going to use? So I decided to go with noise. Like this is an octopus who doesn't like loud noises. Um, and that's why he's pulling in his tentacles. And now I get to use the mechanism that I want. And then giving it a face kind of just plays into that story. He's angry because he doesn't like loud noises. Um, so that's kind of like my, my thinking when it comes to stories. And as you can kind of tell, I'm, you know, the way I'm talking is a little bit all over the place because the way I think about stories is a little bit all over the place um, because I just think there's, there's so many different approaches um, from like just making a very simple character to telling a longer story to just using the projects as part of a story. So, um, yeah, so for this workshop, the focus, as we know, is green energy. And I decided specifically to focus on wind power because um, it was, it's a fun thing, fun way to make things move that doesn't require any electronics. And um, it's something that people have already done in, in really incredible ways. So um, at kind of the extreme end of like an incredible use of wind, for those of you who haven't seen The Strand Beast by Theo Jansen. Um, so this is, I, yeah, they're all wind powered. Um, don't ask me exactly how it works because even I'm not sure. Just let that think for a second. So yeah, so that's sort of an extreme end of how you can use wind to tell a story. And again, the, the story here is that there's this creature that's really just powered by wind and made of wood and other materials, but we look at it and we see something alive because it's moving and it's moving in a very natural way. Um, another thing that, funny enough, I didn't, I suggested using wind without even realizing that uh, whirly gigs are a whole thing. And so whirly gigs are specifically um, like mm, installations and projects people make using wind power. So here's just another example I found while I was researching for this workshop and thought it was, oh, whoops, this is actually. I think I put the wrong YouTube link because there was one where it shows it working. There we go. And 
so there's this whole little story here just being told um, with wind. And again, these are incredible because they are very complicated. But the thing is, you can also tell much simpler stories, you know, something you can put together in just a little bit. So um, Danny, I'm actually sharing yours, which was inspired by the Exploratorium. Uh, the Exploratorium uh, has a page, I'll have a link for it at the end. And this is a much simpler whirly gig, but it's still like this character spinning this thing and it tells this story. So um, I, so I started when I proposed the workshop, I started experimenting myself and like very much wanted to try different uh, mechanisms and see what were the kinds of stories I could tell. Like I said, I don't actually have a lot of the stuff I built with me because I um, had to leave it in Israel. So I took a lot of photos and videos and built a couple more things once I arrived here. Um, by the way, I also realized that I haven't been looking at questions or anything. So um, Danny or Soraya or someone, if you need to interrupt me to let me know if there's a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anytime we have a question from the YouTube, please guys, if you have a question, um, uh, write it down on the chat box at YouTube. The guys that are here with us in the Zoom room, also you can write it down at the chat box, a question, and we can pass it on to Jasmine, okay? Yeah, just I, I have like two screens open and it's and if I open up the chat. It's okay, people screen. are saying like, wow, wow, I want to do the tinkle. Uh, this is so the, cute, the I love oh, the whale. Yeah, yeah. so yes, yeah. the crowd pleaser. You can't <laughs> yeah. see anybody's face. Like, feel oh. reassured we just love everything and yeah. we're tinkering along right so you feel oh, guys yeah. at home have materials and feel like start studying you, you know, can write your question around. in english or in portuguese okay no problem oh, fantastic that's great thank you <laughs> it's so weird when it's like you don't see we got you covered yeah. yes <laughs> so yeah so I started also just tinkering and exploring things and I was just doing um I started with some very straightforward things so like this is my first version of a bicycle um before I decided to buy a fan it only has one wheel moving and that's because at this point I still had quite figured out like what mechanisms I could use um and just wanted to like just figure out basically like can I make moving pictures um then I started experimenting with more mechanisms and a lot of the challenge is sort of trying to make gears and stuff with just materials I have at home. So those are just made of cardboard and uh, glue. And then, um, like I said, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I'm going to go a little bit into the mechanisms, but like you don't have to, to do any mechanisms like this. You can still tell really simple stories and what I'll do is I'll go through this and then and then we'll talk about how to actually make this for mm -hmm. uh, anybody who wants to walk through. But um, so I experimented some more with making gears. Jasmine, and sorry to interrupt, but we do have a question. Uh, uh, Tonya would like to know if uh, Jasmine, do you sketch out your designs first? Yeah, that's a good question. So I sometimes do. So um, here we go. So actually this, I did a couple of sketches here and they're very, very loose sketches. So like I had an idea for like a boat thing, which I didn't make and I was figuring out the base or here just like mm. making sure I knew the directions the gears were. Um, in some ways, the, the things that I built, oh, and I did actually sketch this frog guy I also sketched. I, I don't remember where I put, oh, I do remember where I put the sketch. It's in another room, but yeah, <laughs> um, I, I do sketch things at first. And then what I also do is I treat sort of the, the first prototypes in some ways are sketches as well. So like this, mm -hmm. um, this bicycle is eventually what became like this much fancier looking bicycle. But mm -hmm. I sort of used the first one as, as it's more like a three-dimensional working sketch. You can see, I just drew it with, you know, Sharpie, like right mm -hmm. on there. So mm -hmm. I find it's really helpful. Um, yeah, and 
uh, and similarly, even when I'm like experimenting with all these things, like in some ways, it's sort of like through, it's 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 a way of sketching as well. Like I think I think I did sketch these out on paper, and then I was just like, let's just start putting some tape together and see what happens. Um, so these are actually the second round of gears that I tried because um, I was trying to avoid hot glue, um, just because I sort of not everybody has a hot glue gun. Also, if you're working with kids, sometimes well. I was gonna say if that you're working with kids, sometimes they burn themselves, but I also burn myself. So, <laughs> um, so th these gears are just uh, barbecue skewers that I just cut up and um, basically poked them through the holes here, uh, and then put a drop of glue on them and let them dry for a few hours, and they kind of they mesh with. So there's there's gears that have the pegs coming out this way and then gears mm -hmm. that have them flat and for those ones I just taped them right on and so the reason I did that is just so that they can can mesh with each other um this one I, I think it was before I actually measured the diameters which was silly of me so like these don't actually mesh um <laughs> but the later ones again it's also you know making things up as I go okay along. You have convinced Helen. She said it's brilliant and she's very excited to try with her own students. And so oh, am I. <laughs> it's awesome. true. Oh, I want to see what they make. Um, yeah. yeah. And so just again, bear with me while I like geek out as a mechanical engineer for another moment here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll go back to the fun stuff um, right. for anyone interested so like the way gears work is um they're they're used for a couple different things but they're used for instance you can take a small gear which will um move fast but not have much torque or like power and use that to spin a bigger gear here a lot of the times I was doing it actually just to to make multiple things move at once um so the so the big thing that I, you know, did was, so a couple of things is one, um, gear ratios, I won't go into too much, but like, basically it's just something you need to keep in mind when you're designing the gears is making sure that like, if you want the gears to mesh, that the diameter relates to the number of the spokes on there. Um, for the bicycle, um, the, the number of gears on there, or the, the teeth, sorry, the number of teeth on there is actually the same. It's just eight and eight. And that's because it's being used. Um, it's being used so that I can take one spinning motion, which is the pinwheel, and then using that to make three different moving parts, uh, or two in the case of the bicycle. It was meant to be three, but I didn't get to finish the rider. So, um, and and like I said, to some degree, the way I'm thinking about these things is I'm thinking about when I when I said I'm going to use wind, um, I was sort of thinking about if this was a motor, how would I use it? And so I'm kind of thinking the entire time of like, I'm just gonna treat this pinwheel as a substitute for a motor. And that kind of helped got, get me thinking like, okay, what are the kinds of things I can do with a motor? Well, I can attach gears to a motor. Why can't I attach gears to the pinwheel? Um, so in this case, it's eight and eight teeth and just basically one is flat and one is um, through and just the, the diameter of it is roughly the same so that the, the the spokes mesh together with with the ones on the other side. So the the diameter, not the cardboard, but the outside diameter, the gray line there. Um, and I can answer more questions about that when we actually get to the, the tinkering part. Um, so uh, yeah, so like I said, um, I was, so I experimented with that and that is how I made that, that bicycle model. Um, uh, I think that's the same video, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, this is so. Just to give you a sense of how I how I experiment as well, um, is I I don't magically you know put the whole thing together in one go. I'm experimenting as I go along as well, and so you can kind of see there before I again I, I gave up and eventually bought a fan like this because I was running out of breath. <laughs> I <laughs> bet. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, oh, um, yeah. So like, I'll just kind of try it as I go along and see what works and see what doesn't. Um, so you know, I was building the bicycle, and um, you can see that it's got 
it, it's a little, it's probably easiest to see what's going on from this perspective where it's got the three gears in the back and the, the bicycle in the front. Um, and like I said, there's actually three moving parts. So in the video, I only used two, which is the bicycle wheels. Where did my frog go? This frog was supposed to be the rider. <laughs> but unfortunately, the bicycle's in Israel and the frog is with me in Washington, DC. So <laughs> you'll have to pretend for a moment, but. <sighs> okay, this is so cute. <laughs> so he would have been pedaling um, the bicycle. <laughs> But when he not, when yeah. he flies back to Israel, yeah. he can go bike riding. I might have to make him a gift because I don't think he's gonna. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is also just again experimenting with different ways I can use all these things. So um, here I'll stop the share for a moment so you can see the the frog bigger, I guess. Um, so the frog is actually just one pinwheel. Um, oh. Yeah, and that's that's fun. So, and again, on the bicycle, it would have been the center pinwheel, whereas the other uh -huh. two would have been the wheels. Yeah. And then the movement is, is um, it's just this cardboard circle going around attached to the pinwheel. Uh huh. And I've got a, um, I've, I've been using um, bent paper clips or straightened out paper clips to just uh -huh. kind of stick things through. And so the foot is just attached to there. And then the leg is just a hinge, uh, again, made out of just more bent paper clips. So mm -hmm. you can create all these like different movements just, just from the one, even the one spinning motion. Um, and then even just, uh, so the, actually, let me go back to share green because I wanted to share the exploratory. So the frog mechanism is easier because it, it's only one wheel. You just have to make the articulation in the character, the frog yeah. or another character you want to. So you have to think about the articulation, but you only use one wheel, attach it to the pinwheel, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so it's the, 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 the frog took me yeah. much, much less time. The gear yes. took forever. So maybe it's a good project to start with uh, the, the wind the power. Wind, the wind power moving wheels with their students. And yeah. then you, you, add, you go and add uh, difficult as layers and go to the gears and so on. You said scaffolding a little bit. Yeah, awesome. I think I'm going to go for that. Folding. You don't even yeah. need to start with like a, you know, the reason I showed the bicycle first is just because that's how I started to explore it. Uh -huh. But because I wanted to see how much can you push it. But um, yeah. you don't even, I think one thing I didn't take a video of because it didn't come out great. I probably should have just taken a video anyway, is, you know, this already, it has articulated mechanisms, um, mm -hmm. but you can even make it simpler. Like, you know, what if I just, take the frog off and I put a picture on here. And then uh -huh. when I blow on this or glue, you know, something, then this is gonna be spinning too. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can already just do something very simple. I think I tried making like a, a pig that was like jumping over a cloud or the cow jumping over the moon or something. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so you can start very simple. And the, the other thing was sort of, I looked at also kind of what Danny and the Exploratorium were doing is another approach is um, is to use a crank. So this mm -hmm. is just uh, a pinwheel attached to a bent paper clip again, and, and it acts like a crank. This was originally going to be an elephant where the trunk moved, but the elephant was <laughs> very <laughs> tiny. So instead of an <laughs> elephant squirting water. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. So cute. Awesome. Paper. It's a paper elephant, right? Yeah, it's just origami. Yes. Origami. Yeah, like, origami. Light materials. They are wonderful for this kind of uh, of project. Awesome. Yeah. And, and this mechanism, uh, inspired by Explorat from Exploratorium, it, it's amazing because you are turning the pinwheel and the scene actually gives you uh, an impression that it's the other way around. It's the elephant yeah. that turning the 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 
cr- the cracking. The crank. Yeah, look yeah. at that. How cute. How cute. And it's from, uh, they got inspired by an Israeli artist, I think, Jasmine. Yes. yes. Yeah, no good. Yes. I, I would like to meet her. Um, I have Me to too. meet her. Yeah, I, 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 I checked this link or something to this. Beautiful. Yeah. So that was one of the things I was going to mention is everybody should also check out their their website and and the way they built the pinwheel is a little different than I did but it it all worked uh-huh. like it's still pinwheel yes. and the thing I love is what what was fun is that it's you know different people I think think about things in different ways which is amazing because I went with wind power and my first thought was I'm gonna put lots of gears on it and then <laughs> this, and this is like a very different approach it's like let's use the crank mechanism and yeah. and the stories you know like this is, is something where it's the spinning is straight on and this uh-huh. spinning is taking it and, and making so it. So beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I had yeah. so much fun doing this and I, I just put outside because I love to see it move. Yeah. Maybe because it's so hot here in Brasilia. So it's really reassuring. There is some wind actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's moving. It's, I tried it, 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 it is. First version it is in my backyard. Yeah. My backyard in my balcony. And uh-huh. nothing, no wind. <laughs> no, it's awesome. And then you can show projects like you can put a motor and use a battery, but you can also do the same using the wind, right? So you can or solar power, right? That's like, that would be awesome. Just like to- That's the beauty of it. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and I think what's fun too is like, again, we're, we're making things out of, you know, paper and simple materials, but like, you know, I, when I proposed the workshop, you all came back with, oh, like the boy who harnessed the wind. And it's like, you know, wind can be used to make electricity and to do so many things. Yeah. Um, yes. This movie is amazing. It's inspiring. Thank you, Jasmine, for so, so many beautiful things. Thank you so much. Uh, Love it. Yeah, so I thought next I was going to go, I mean, people should feel free to start tinkering at their own pace, but for anybody who kind of needs a starting point, I was going to walk through like how to actually, how at least again, there's no right way, wrong way to do this, but how I built the base and like attach the pinwheel and all that. Awesome, awesome. I'm tinkering along. I'm tinkering so already. Everybody here and on YouTube, I hope. So I hope, yeah. I hope. Okay, uh, guys, I, look, so time I, to... You see, I have mine ready here. I already cut my wheels. Okay. In so paper, in cardboard. I just, have, I just have to go and get something, but I come back. I'm here, Jasmine. I'm okay. Here. I, I think I'm going to do my pinwheel with this material. It's a kind of plastic that came with my ice cream pack yesterday. So I thought maybe I should try this. I don't know if it's too hard, but I'm going to try to use it instead of paper. Try That's it. cool. Yeah. 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 I I've been using so I used cardstock for some and then I also made some with origami paper. Um mm-hmm. so yeah, just anything that's bendable. Um so the way I did it, and again, it's it's interesting because if you go onto the Exploratorium website, they have other mechanisms, me, not mechanisms, methods where like they make one out of a paper cup and yes, um, that was amazing too. Yeah, I didn't have any paper cups though, so I just made it. Me neither, so I have to try try this. I said, no way, I'm going to make buy paper cups to do this. Just like use paper. (laughs) I mean, I felt bad because I'm like, the whole point is green energy. And I I bought a fan because I ran out of breath testing everything. (laughs) 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 Okay, guys, it's hands on time. We are here at Maker Day. Uh, Jasmine, walk us through some mechanism and you are going to make something with the materials that you have at home at hand you know and we are going to do together here with jasmine we can um ask her questions show her what we are doing to see if it's okay so we invite you here at zoom and at youtube to join us for this tinkering with wind. Yeah, and definitely just ask any questions if, if anything I'm explaining isn't clear or if you just have a different approach to doing it, like please share because like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do this. And it's always really like 
at least to me, I find it fascinating to see how other people do things because I'm like, wow, I would have never thought of that. Um, oh, I love this too. When somebody come with an amazing idea, different idea, and they say, oh, I haven't thought of that. This is good. This is that's awesome. That's how I felt when I found the Exploratorium one. I'm like, yeah. I never even thought to like make it with a crank mechanism. Um, yeah, or using so, a paper cup. Oh, yeah. Using or the paper cup. I mean, I was, I was trying all kinds of things to just... So, um, yeah, so for the pinwheel, the pinwheel part's pretty simple. It's just a square square sheet of paper. And I just like, you know, draw two diagonal lines so I can find out where the center is. Um, I'm cheating and I pre pre uh, set some of these. Oh, um, let me actually, let, let me just explain this real quick and then I'll answer Gary's question. Okay, That's a very okay. Good question because I ran into that problem as well, um, which like you think I would have, remembered from school but whoops um so yeah so then for the the pinwheel you just kind of cut to about halfway um whoops here you can see it better where I have the lines there you cut about halfway and then um then there's a couple different options like basically the goal is to get this shape where you've got all the the things in the center um mm -hmm. so you can glue it or tape it. I actually preferred not to because I hate waiting for the glue to dry. And so what I did instead is I tried a couple of different things is one I used, um, oops, let me just show this. I used these like brads, I think they're called. And I just, what I did is I cut little um, slits in the, um, in the pinwheel. I can take this apart to show you and use that mm -hmm. to hold the whole thing together. So oh, nice. I got, um, one part of one leg of it still sticking out and I'm going to use that later to attach it to the skewer. But here, if I take this apart, you can see that the way this went together is just no tape or anything. It's just uh, little cutouts there for the, the brad that just goes right in there. Yeah. And then if you don't have brads, the other thing I tried, um, was doing it with uh like just a hair clip like a bobby pin mm -hmm. um and so this again similar i think this one i i taped the the this down first and then i put a hole through it and then i put the the um hair pin through and put a little piece of skewer to hold it in place mm -hmm. and again it's nice because you have this this whole part sticking out which makes it really easy later because you're gonna have to you know attach the whole thing to a skewer and so if you've got yeah the the clip the hair clip or the um the back of the brad sticking out then you just i'm using a sewing pin oh i didn't even think of that probably because i don't sew <laughs> that makes a lot of sense <laughs> um so yeah if people want to start on that and then again you just you literally just take the whole thing and tape it right to the, oh, where did I, you just tape it right to the skewer there. Um, and then you've got the pinwheel attached to something. And I, I put a little piece of cardboard in the back there to make it a little stiffer, but you don't need that. Um, mm -hmm. So going back to Gary's question while people are making pinwheels. Okay, what, what Gary is, is asking. Right, so Gary's oh. asking, um, I don't always get my gears to mesh properly. What is your method to make sure gears mesh? And oh, wow. so that's a big problem with gears, yeah. right? When we don't have laser cutters, I feel your pain, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yay. Yay. Oh. It works. Oh, I like that plasticky material. It's like all shiny. Yeah, it's a lid on uh, an ice cream tin. It came covering the ice cream tin. Oh my gosh. Oh, I thought that was a giant pinwheel and they're really, oh, it is really big actually. Um, yeah. So yeah, let me share my screen again. Um, so I went through this real fast, but mm -hmm. so generally with, when you have um, meshing teeth, even with like regular gears, the, the number needs to be something um, divisible by each other. So like 20 can go into 40. Um, eight can be divided by, both of them can be divided by four. Um, but the other thing is at least for these, these 
like ones that I've made out of um, these skewers. So even if you have the same number, you want this, this gray circle here has to be roughly the same diameter. Oh. Yeah. Pedro has just shared here website to generate gears. I, I hope they, so I, I suppose Helps they- to calculate yeah. the, 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 the gear ratio. Yeah. Yeah. And so even if you're doing, so that will help you because if you, for instance, decide, let's say you, you have something and you want it to move, you've got the pinwheel. And again, it's moving really fast, but you don't want something to be moving that fast. You can make a bigger gear with more teeth and that one will move uh, slower. And so for that, it's really useful to know the gear ratio. If you're going to even just have two gears with the same number of teeth, um, let's say you're using it, like, like I said, for the bicycle, um, everything's moving at the same speed, but I wanted multiple things moving at once. So for the pegs, you, you need, you can kind of tell here, you need the, the, the pegs to come out and just hit the skewers uh, going the other way, just enough to actually let move them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the way I did is I measured out, um, if you can tell from the pictures here, oh, you kind of can actually. So you can see I measured out this inner circle where the pegs are on. Um, and that is actually around the same diameter, just a little uh, as as this one. So that big circle there. Mm -hmm. I wish I had these in person, but oh well, they're on the bicycle now. <gasps> no, I'm trying to do some live, uh, live uh, drawing here. <laughs> um, no, but I think we yeah. get it. Okay. Yeah, so like this, this is basically this diameter here is is roughly the same as this one. It's a little bit bigger because it needs to overlap into there to to actually hit the pegs, but that's kind mm -hmm. of where you need to be. And yeah, just experimenting also. <laughs> like I said, the very first one I made, these ones, they, you know, I, I, I think I measured them out and I still didn't measure them right. And, um, oh, you can't see in that video, probably because I cut the parts where I kept getting stuck, but I, I should have <laughs> like, they did keep getting stuck. The gears didn't always mesh. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so that's the gears. And then I guess, uh, where are people at right now? I don't know. If, uh, Oh, well, you can ask people to show what they are doing now here in Zoom. And so they can open the look. camera. Yeah. Ooh. So look at Kat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's such a pretty paper. Yes. Beautiful since the beginning. Cool. Awesome, Kat. It's weird. I'm not, I don't think I'm seeing everybody in the Zoom room. It's showing 27. Okay, I guess a lot of people just have the camera off. Yeah. Oh. Let's take a look what Pedro is doing. Yes, Pedro. What are you? What are you up to? I just have to to answer the door over there. I can show you. I'm still making the pinwheel here. Okay. Uh, all right. So I, just just a second. <laughs> all right. 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 Okay. Oh, whoops! I think some participants also don't have the link for the camera. I think I had the the. The webinar link and then the participant link. Um, I see. Oh, not everybody. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah. oh, but please put in the Padlet so we can take yes. a look. Yes. So you can see you tinker along. Is the can you put here, Sora, the link to the Padlet? Yes. Where we are uploading what we are making. So yeah, so let me, I'll, I'll keep going on to um, Thank you. Uh, Thank the you. base as well. Again, like th this is just how, what worked for me. There's, you know, even you could see the Exploratorium was making the base in a different way. Um, uh -huh. I made mine out of mostly just like these triangles out of cardboard. And mm -hmm. so there's a couple of different ways, like, you know, this one here can actually show. So you can do sort of just uh, a sheet of cardboard that you just, you literally just like fold in half and then you can okay. like, 
either glue something across to hold it in place, or you can even, this one is just, um, the bottom is just taped to hold it in place. Or the other thing you can do if you have a long enough piece of cardboard is you just do into three parts and then you just tape the top and that'll hold itself in place. So that's how I've been making the, the base for this. You can see. Just okay, so I guess I need some cardboard now. Huh? Does everybody um, have some You can cardboard? also make it out of paper too, like the, the exploratory that's true. paper. True, true, true. No, oh, Eco, Eco has the awesome, I just regular paper he used. Let's see, Eco. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to make, uh, since I have a, only a regular paper, I'm drawing on mine, so it makes a little prettier when it actually <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> is <laughs> so, You see, so he, <laughs> you, you can clearly see where he is in this team, Akrinom, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Forget the mechanism. Let's do the... the, the a a <laughs> for art. art. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Love it. And I just to remind everyone that's watching us on YouTube, please show us your project as well. Uh, submitting a photo oh. at our Padlet, all right? And I'm also going board. to share the Google slide link because I got a question from Celia about the, the links and stuff. So let me uh, copy that. Okay, we can share YouTube as yeah. well. Um, and there's some, I'll get, I'll get to the, at the end, there's also a couple links. Um, okay. So yeah, um, right. So going back to this, um, the, what I did is, so I actually, um, I, I literally just used like a hole. So I, I measured where the center of, of the cardboard is. And then mm -hmm. in terms of like where the pinwheel goes, a couple of things that I, again, learned the hard way, <laughs> which is if you put the pinwheel too low, it will hit the table while it's spinning. Oh. Yes. <laughs> which is why <laughs> the poor frog always sits like on the edge of the table. This is a um, good tip. <laughs> yeah, like we do, we, we, we poke everything, we place everything and we go, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's so obvious once oh, you do no. it, but you don't. Yes, yeah, like. And then yeah. the flip side, though, is if you go too high up, then mm -hmm. the um, the axle just doesn't have as much of a contact point. And mm -hmm. so when it's spinning, it it'll be a little bit more wobbly. So um, just something to keep in mind and you can play around with it. Um, but yeah, basically, you just you just make two holes. I marked this one and I didn't put it in yet. But um, and then you can either put the skewer in directly. Um, if you do that, you'll probably need, you'll need some kind of like stopper here because otherwise, as I again discovered the hard way, um, if you blow on it, it'll keep moving forward. And then eventually the pinwheel will get stuck because it's going to hit the base, which. Oh. <laughs> um, oh the same thing happened in the afternoon session when we use uh, DC motors and uh, sometimes we stick something on the tip of the DC model very close to the base and the DC doesn't turn. So you have to keep, uh, keep in mind to be careful where you attach a piece to the end of the DC motor. And I didn't even notice at first. I was just like, am I not blowing hard enough? And it's then not working. <laughs> it's not working. I love it. It's a good, like, just playful way of looking at mistakes. This is the best for me, really. This is, yes. It's awesome. Yeah. The thing is, like, you can get so I do like troubleshooting when we are yeah. trying something. I do like, I do like the mystery of figuring out why it's like, not working. It, it's, no, it's really At first, positive, you used right? to get me frustrated, but now I do love it because it's a mystery that but you have even to figure so, it out. Even know? when we get super frustrated, because then yeah. we, we have emotion, and emotion is awesome for learning. We get so frustrated, and then finally we get it. 
So the satisfaction of getting things, yeah, you know, I like after it. some effort, just like a, it's, it's awesome. I think that's I think that's the best way to learn. That, like failure is part of the process. Yes, and, of the <laughs> learning process, you know. Yeah, if you don't fail, you know, either you're I don't know a miracle worker or you're probably not, <laughs> you know, trying. Who, who doesn't fail? <laughs> I, who's, who's not trying, <laughs> trying things that are easy enough? yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah so this one i just put like a little cardboard stopper on there the other thing that i you can do is you can actually just wrap um tape on there big enough so it doesn't go through the hole um and the other thing you can try again i just experimented with lots of different ways so this one i have the skewer going straight through um i'm working on my base right now oh nice Oh, I yeah. like how it's a tall one too, so you won't have the problem I did where the pinwheel runs into the yeah. table. <laughs> um, so this one I also I I tried putting a straw through as well. So the skewer goes into the straw. Um, mm -hmm. and the main reason was just they both work um with the skewer straight into the cardboard. Sometimes mm -hmm. I accidentally made the hole too big and then the skewer would just be a lot more wobbly. So with the straw, it's just a little bit less wobbly, but um, if you don't have a straw or you don't feel like it, you don't need it. So it's just, oh, and the other nice thing about the straw is um, it, it kind of acts as a stopper. So again, I, I put tape on there. So this, this can't go too far back. Because I see. It, yeah, otherwise when the wind blow, it might get stuck there, right? Because it just yeah. gets cracked, crushed. Well, I'll bet you could probably put like a piece of cardboard on the back of the pinwheel and then it'll get stuck. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But I, I think I, I did this because I also wanted this at a very specific distance because if if the windmill, if the pinwheel moved in, then the circle moved out and the frog is sort of mounted at a specific point. So then his leg would be like out here and he would be there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, just, I'd say just experiment. The, the main things you need are basically just a pinwheel, an axle, and then something that you're attaching to the pinwheel. So yeah, so I, I guess I'm gonna start tinkering too now, and I'll, I'll yeah, please see my really messy table there, my notes on what I was gonna talk about. Um, oh yeah, and then I guess when we have, so I think we've got another half hour, so we'll tinker for a bit, and um, I'll ask people to share things. And then um, the last few minutes also just talk about, actually, no, you know what? I'm going to talk about this right now because it's useful inspiration while you guys are tinkering. So again, okay, okay. yeah, you don't need to totally pay attention, but um, just some more inspiration. Whoops. Uh, screen. Is everybody working? How are you guys at YouTube? Yes, How are I'm you back. doing? <laughs> I'm back. Yes, awesome. that's I'm a little good. bit late. I'm still doing the pinwheel. Okay. Uh, did, I did finished my me? pinwheel and I'm working on my base right now. Already painted? Of Ooh, course, nice. that I made the mistake that Jasmine told me not to make. Mm. <laughs> too big. Oh, so it keeps bumping. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay you just put it over the end of the table and just yes that that's yeah pretend that was the, yeah <laughs> this is intentional design <laughs> so yeah just uh, i mentioned already the exploratorium website has just brilliant inspiration there um, a couple other things that are useful. There's a lot of makers. So I, I, I pulled out Rob Ives in particular because he does a lot of automata. But the thing is like, again, just think of, if you think of the so pinwheel cute. as a motor, like you can attach a pinwheel to that and make that bunny and you're going to have that bunny spinning. Yeah, I want the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> So he's got all kinds of amazing stuff on, on his website. Yeah, I yeah. follow him. It's amazing. Um, I know, I made mean, like, I used one of his dinosaurs as a model for something. Um, but I guess just looking at Automata for inspiration as well, because like the, anything that's got this sort of crank motion is something that can then be adapted to a wind power. And then- the Yes. Other. Yeah. So like, it, I don't know, there's like, the, 
the, the frog is basically an automata anyway. It's just, I used a pinwheel instead of like turning it by hand. Um, mm -hmm. And the other one that I saw, which I thought was really cool. So I think Lindsay, who may or, I don't know if she's on the call right now, but um, developed this. And then Sam on uh, Twitter made this. And this is just another really cool way to make a, a pinwheel entirely out of straws instead of paper. So I thought that was really neat. Um, so, yeah. And I'm going to also make some stuff. Oh, wait, no, I want to see what people are making on Padlet first. Let me see if there is anything at our Padlet. Uh, the table, sort of. Yeah. Oh, we already have the Eco Spin Wheel at Padlet. I'm too busy to put pictures. I'm just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> but I will. <laughs> it looks like patterned paper almost. Yeah. And then I guess the uh, people who are on uh, the call and can share a camera, um, like Aparna, I don't know if you 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 were tinkering early in the call. Oh, Pedro's got something also going on. Oh, that's that's a really nice color paper. Aparna, yes. But I see Aparna, please. Yes, I'm mute. What you do? Uh, oh yeah, can you she has me? the. It's, um, yes, yes. Uh, I use some old fan. I think. Ooh. I hope it works. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, I'm just working. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's how I'm really like, I don't know what I'm doing at the time. And I'm I'm using straw, so I think it will move so easily. So uh -huh. in this hole, I will add this straw. So mm -hmm. you know, there there will be less friction. Yeah. yeah, and I like that you have two holes there, so you can already yeah, yeah, yeah. you're gonna be doing yeah. like multiple but things I, moving. Yeah, then I will add some straw here. So hopefully mm -hmm. it works. <laughs> it will, it um, will keep working up. Thank you. So it's finished when it's finished, right? It will yes. work eventually. <laughs> if it doesn't, it's because it's not finished yet. <laughs> Um, cool. Oh, I think yeah, I see. I think we have panelists and attendees, and so I think maybe attendees can't share camera. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Okay, I'm sorry about that, everyone. Um, yeah, <laughs> still learning how this all works. But yeah, if you share on Padlet, I'm also keeping an eye on that. Um, yeah, the panelists can share. Cool. If you want, I can share you something if you want, something like this. this oh my gosh, so what beautiful. is that? <laughs> seahorse, I love it. So uh, yeah. Uh, oh no. Uh, if you move this one, it will open its uh, mouth. Oh my gosh, this is so But cute. I really want to add some gears here. Actually, I'm looking for you, Jasmine. You will uh, teach me something. I don't have mechanical engineering background. So I tried <laughs> it, but yeah, I think it is not really successful. It was, you it, it, it looked hand for it. So one of the other links that I was going to share later is the, the paper mech website. Um, okay. Oh, this is so precious. And, uh, I, love I have this one as well. It is very simple. It's a... Uh, uh, you just have to move and it's, it's just made of paper. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> it's not so long. cute. And I have something like this. Batman, maybe you remember this one. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going to be so beautiful when you put the wind power. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you, and yeah. Oh, yeah, like this, you can move it. <laughs> I love so, this. It's, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. That's wow. amazing. You're welcome. I just, I mean, you say it's just paper, but I think it's so much, I think it's difficult to try and figure out how you can make complicated things out of paper, right? Like, yeah, but I really miss the, you know, I really can't understand the gear and how to move it. I really loved it when you showed how the diameter we have to measure because I really don't have that idea. And awesome. I will try it, maybe. Right now I'm doing this, but 
uh, i think i will uh, add some solar panel so this will be oh, move okay. and then everything will move something like that but i think it will take a lot of time <laughs> i mean before that before that i should learn about gears <laughs> I, I should learn about solar panels i haven't really gotten to work with that much like um, um, so nice. maybe uh, i have this picture if i stop the video and i think one of them is working on solar so my picture yeah i make some a small small robot it's just a motor robot nothing else it's just for the kids <laughs> and especially for <laughs> nephews <laughs> It fits with the whole green energy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I can, let me, I'll, sh the, the paper mech website, I'll put that in the chat as well. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a good resource. I mean, that's mostly if you have a laser cutter, because it's kind of hard. Part of the reason I made the gears the way I did is because cutting gears from scratch is really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have that machine. So that's well, why I have to do everything with hand. One thing you can look at, and that would also work actually for wind power, I'm going to share my screen again, is um, I, didn't, I didn't do this, but actually now that I think about it, this would be a cool thing to do with, with a windmill is, where is the bill? I love this website. So up and down crank, which like that's something you can all cut by hand. Um, and that again, just uses a spinning motion. I mean, it'd go a lot faster because it's on a pinwheel. So you have like something that's going real fast. And then the other thing actually for something like the dinosaur is um, a cam. And so a cam um, creates sort of a yes. up and down motion like this. And again, you know, it's something this you can cut without a laser cutter, which is nice. But it will take a lot of time, and especially with your students. Oh my God, you have to work <laughs> day and night. <gasps> That's true. Yeah, I have only like I I work with students more like as a tutor, so it's one on one with Zoom, with Zoom, and like if it was a whole class, it would be quite difficult to explain. Oh, maybe change the audience to everyone instead of host and stuff. Oh, yes, I did do that in fact. Awesome, Sora. This is awesome, like to teach the kids so that they can decorate the garden right now that we should be outdoors more instead of back in classrooms wearing masks. And I, I, I want to show something that I did with solar power. You guys were talking about solar power. Okay. It's like I had it's laser cut because I had something that was laser cut here. So it's, I, use, I just used what I had, but it could be mm -hmm. anything. So on the top, I have a very uh, a DC motor, a small one, and I cut a ballerina oh. here. So it spins. So my project for tomorrow is to make a big one of those so that I can bring uh, to the kids so that they can, you know, get inspired and do their own. But yeah. So I still have to get the solar power uh, I bought uh, online, so I still don't have it, but I want to hook them tomorrow. <laughs> I saw that one on Twitter and I was just like, it looks like, um, what do you Eggs. call it? Those music boxes where you, you open oh, it. Oh, yeah, cute. Yeah, we put, I could put some music too, right? So it would spin to different mm -hmm. Awesome. Love, love it. Okay, I have my... Um, my mechanism going but i just don't know what is going who i have to see to make my character who is going to be spinning but it's moving Ooh. yeah so i don't know it's gonna be a dragon or just a circle i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to vote oh. for dragon, but you know. Okay, guys, if, if anybody here, uh, the panelists who are here and wants to open the camera and share with us what you're doing, please do so. Yes, please do so. Hmm. Uh, uh, hey, Jasmine, I'm a little bit late here, my doing the, the panel, and I was thinking like I uh, was a little bit late to, to connect uh, to this, this stick. 
So I'm get some. I'm heating some hot glue to stick it here. But I was wondering if it's if it's heavy, we will spin good. How will be the movement? Like, we go, well, it's better to be light. If it's heavy, it's a. Now we get into physics. If it's heavy, it's going to be harder to get it to start moving. But then once it moves, it's actually going to have more momentum, and so it'll it'll like keep moving for for longer sometimes. But um, yeah, you might need to like it might be harder to get it to start moving. So you might need to either blow really hard or like get a fan or something. Mm, makes sense. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's moving. Maybe you can see. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Oh, Sara has her base going too. Awesome. Go get a fan, sister. You're going to run out of breath. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, very exciting. I love it. Everything that moves makes me smile, you know, <laughs> like just little uh, uh, projects that move. I love it. Right. It feels so magical when things start to move. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I think that's part of why I became a mechanical engineer, not like something else, because I just like making things that move. <laughs> uh, Jasmine, I'm a little bit confused. Is uh, how it works with with like? Uh... Oh, it just mechanism. Froze. I'm done. Oh. Remember how it works. Oh, for um for the gears smashing? Yeah. Yeah. If you have the gears, you you still use the you can still use the pinwheel, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Let me uh I'll sh I'll show the picture again because I don't have it um with me in person, but you can see what is going on here is the the pinwheel is attached to the middle gear there. And so that's what's actually the the only one that's actually spinning from the wind power. And then the other two are moving because they're pushed by that gear. Actually, it's a little more obvious in the, the video. Um, okay, it's in the there middle. There you can see the middle one is, is moving and it's, it's pushing the, the other. The small one. middle one, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. So it's the, more complicated. <laughs> you, you don't have to do three gears. I just did, you know, three because I was feeling ambitious. But uh, I mean, this is exploring. This one, you were exploring. That's why <laughs> this one is just two gears right there. Um, and so it's just one pushing the other one. And you can you can kind of see how like actually there it's a little bit slower. The video where um, the the tips of the the gears are just just enough to touch and mesh without like catching on each other cool thank you super cool <laughs> thank you yeah it's fun playing with gears <laughs> uh, cecilia says she's getting lightheaded from all the blowing which is why i why i bought the fan <laughs> <laughs> very funny when we went to the store and they were like trying to tell me oh this fan is you know really high powered it'll keep you really cool i'm like no no no, that's not what i need it for i just need it to like blow this pinwheel for me <laughs> people are like what <laughs> oh yeah okay so just for a time check we have 20 more minutes so um i thought we'd just spend most of that tinkering i did have a couple links at the end i was just going to share for more resources but if people have questions just um throw them at me I can. Any questions busy. from here? Any questions from YouTube? You guys at YouTube, you can also ask, ask questions, okay? Just write it down on the chat box. And Jasmine can answer those questions. I just need to open up the, there we go, yeah. YouTube chat. I already have my base. Oops, slide 18. Is there a way to just share all the all the videos at once? Okay. Well, if you just click and request access, I'll just uh mm -hmm. maybe later on you can put some of the videos in our 
palette so people can refer back. Yeah. Oh, that's so smart. You think I would have after like this much time, you know, <laughs> figure all this out. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> and your website too, so people can reach you and see all the awesome projects. I have uh, made once the Tico bot and I love the, the experience. I still have yeah. it. Yeah, I bought the, the servo to try the Tico bot project, oh, but so I cute. just lost the servo. Oh, oh my no. gosh. <laughs> I don't know where it is. You know? Okay, but when it comes to server motors, these hobby ones, you should get at least two or three, not only one. I actually, when I started with the Ticklebot, I only had a couple and I kept having to take apart all my old robots to get the servos out. And I was like, okay, I can't, it breaks my heart every time I have to, to take them apart. So I bought them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they become like your little pets, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one. It's Maybe the pandemics or something, but I see my little uh, projects as my friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying he... here Wilson, okay. to do uh, some. I have this little fan, which is a uh -huh. USB fan. Yeah. So it works very badly. <laughs> but I have a, a, a little bit of a trouble that I, I'm. I'll, I'll try to get on my own, but the the wind from the fan is mm -hmm. actually pushing the the stick the the skewer into the 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 little cardboard box. Oh, I have. Yeah, you know what you could do? Put like a little piece of straw, or something like I yeah, stopper. Yeah, so it goes on on uh, itself, right? Yeah. So it, yeah. But so. I, but I'm I, I'm really glad that it's actually working anyway. So yes, yes. We I have was a not question feeling for... that confident. <laughs> it is working awesome gary saying uh, jasmine that he has a table full of tico bots and that <gasps> they are addicting <laughs> oh, awesome. i'd love to see a photo <laughs> oh please put in our take a photo and put in the pilot so you can inspire gary other people uh, and we have a question from youtube as well okay i'm gonna have one from abraão but, okay, yeah. Larissa is is asking Jasmine if uh, I go I have if I'm intend to make a bigger model, do I have to make a bigger pinwheel? And which materials would be the best in order to um, make it to keep it outside? At, at outdoors, yeah. Outdoors. Outdoors. So. Yeah. That, those are all good questions. And I, I haven't experimented with that. So I can tell you what my like intuition is, but you'll definitely need to play with it. So first of all, if you, if you so the, the smaller the pinwheel is like the less wind it's catching. And so it'll be easier to spin, but it won't have as much force. And so if you're gonna be doing something that like requires that is bigger and heavier, it'll probably need a bigger pinwheel um, and it might even need a stiffer material to move. So like some of the, the whirly gigs, for instance, they're actually using like wood as a material oh, yeah. um, and probably need a fair amount of wind. But I mean, it, it also depends, like if you've got, so a lot of the, the, the forces are also coming from like the friction in, in here. And so, you know, you can have something big that if you manage to reduce the friction quite a bit, it might still be fine. So I, I would just experiment and, and see, and then in terms of materials, so if you're outdoors, I would, yeah, definitely not use paper unless you're living somewhere where uh, you, it doesn't get wet very often. Um, mm -hmm. So, Brazil. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you're here, you have to cover off the ice cream. Oh, Israel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> except there's no wind in Israel apparently, except at night when I'm freezing. Um, <laughs> but I would try. You could try making the pinwheel out of like some something plasticky for instance um like you know if you just save the packaging from something there's always like plastic packaging type stuff um and you can try cutting that up and making a pinwheel or even like laminating the paper to keep it um sturdier um so yeah i i mean 
I don't know if you could if you could give more detail, it could probably help, but I would just say experiment around and and um, definitely Google whirly gigs. Uh, that's what the it's called when people like make um, things with the with the pinwheels, and you'll see that people have made all kinds of things. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is out of wood, but I think you don't you don't have to do wood. Oh gosh, we only have like a few minutes, or no, we have like twelve minutes left. Uh, uh, Jasmine, oh, no did pressure. you answer Celia's questions as at Q and A? Oh, let me. <coughs> Oh, the Google slide link. Yes. I, I put that in the, the chat. Um, okay. Yeah, and if any, I, I think I, you might need to send me a, a request for the video, but it goes to my email. So I'll just grant access to everybody. I'm sorry, if, like you think I would know how to do all this, but I still get confused. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll put the videos on um, the Padlet afterwards. Yeah, you just have to open the access and uh, for anyone with the link. And then you yeah. It. It's so weird because it, it shares the slides with everybody, but then the videos, I think because they're in Google Drive, it's not automatically sharing them. No, no, you have to share the video as well. Like, well, no, but you can put in the play. set, you can make it uh, like uh, anybody with the link can access, uh, and then you embed in these slides. And then it works fine. Cool. Okay, I have the pinwheel at one side and the wheel working on the other side. So now I have to figure it out what? Watch is going to move, yes? Yes. So you have only 10 minutes, no pressure or anything. Uh -huh. no. I don't know what other people are doing. Oh, come on. We are in the same boat, Soraya. We are the same boat. Come on, director. Come on. Ten more minutes, please. Ten more minutes, teacher. Ten more minutes, please. Um, yeah, if, if people feel comfortable sharing their camera, I'd love to see what, what you're doing. I might pick on you, though, to explain. Oh, I'd love that, too. What are you doing, guys? Sarah, Eco, Apple. Ooh, what are I you like doing? I like is using a, a box as the um as oh, the. Oh, that's. Oh wait, wait! Can you show that again on the camera? Sure. So, so this is a, a a little guy that I have from before. So I'm thinking I'm gonna make a, a make him move. So I'm transforming this into a a, a automata. Oh, oh cute. so cute. Uh, I measured wrong. So oh, I this is so cute. Your frog. No, I want to see your frog. Forget <laughs> the box. Forget the, <laughs> forget the box. Oh, this is so cute. Isn't it? Who oh, has oh. a head and everything. Totally articulated. Love it's it. So, so many cute. possibilities. He can dance. <laughs> yeah, he can dance. Yes. What are you He's doing to make for, the, uh, for the joints? Are those also like brads or yeah they're brads they're oh. just tiny ones oh we don't have those tiny ones here in brazil it's a pity you can order Amazon, Amazon. So. <laughs> yeah i'm kind of digging the whole frog thing too actually i think i was yes. to make a frog from your earlier frog so now we're just like in this Wow. Frog movement. Yeah. <laughs> just so Here, much fun to draw. It's a frog zeitgeist, right? Like everybody's <laughs> in a <Yeah. laughs> Here we, we have those Zahe beaches that you can hammer it. The small ones you can punch conversely with the hammer and it also yeah. works. Yes, we have the small Zahe beats. I don't know how to say it. I think it's the same word in English. I don't know, I don't know the name in English. Like those metal pins that you you have, you can mm -hmm. throw on the other side mm -hmm. and you punch with pressure. Oh, Actually, rivets! Rivets, yes. Ribbit. Talking about frogs, right? Rivets. Ribbit. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to do the joke, sorry. <laughs> it was, it was terrible. Joke. I like it. I'll take it. that as a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I see Kath 
or Catherine is, is still doing gears. Oh, that'll be I don't fun. know. I'm such a sucker for gears, so. Um, I guess I'm, str last... I'm struggling. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, like I said, my first one like came out, and I was just like, "Oh wait, these keep like catching on each other." Oh, that looks. Wow, but uh, it's almost yeah. there, Kat. Yeah. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Not yet. Not Guys, yet. you're rocking. <laughs> <laughs> you're rocking. I was too afraid to try. So <laughs> no, I, I, I never afraid to try, you know? I don't know if I can make it, but I never afraid to try. Fail early and often is yeah. what I heard. So I guess just because there's five minutes left, I think a lot of people already know about these resources, but just for anybody who doesn't, I'm going to share again. So um, a okay. lot of just general maker resources and stuff that I like looking at, and there's so many, so I didn't even, these were just the ones that came to my head first, was um, just generally like Instructables and Make Scene have a lot of stuff for free projects. And sometimes mm -hmm. I'll just, if I'm like, I'll just look at them for inspiration to see like what are other people up to and stuff. And, um, you know, a lot of people just post amazing things for mechanisms in particular. So I already put the paper mech one in the chat. Um, 507 movements is, is really cool. It's actually based off a book that's, I don't know, it's several centuries old. Um, and it has all these different mechanisms and it's just fun to look at, like for inspiration on how you can make things move. They have a whole section on gears and stuff as well. And like, again, for me, I find it a fun challenge to figure out like all these gears, you know, back in the, they're usually made of metal and stuff, but I like figuring out the challenge of like, how can you actually make them out of cardboard or um, whatever materials you have at home. Mm -hmm. um, then for like electronics and computing, I think a lot of people uh, already know the micro bit, but I use the micro bit for a lot of things. Um, and there's a few other similar ones. There's also the- I love micro bit. Yeah, and they have also on their website, like so much stuff. So they've got a lot of like intro projects. And then if you just search for micro bit projects, you'll, you'll find. Mm -hmm. uh, Scrappy circuits, which I haven't, and my book is sitting waiting for me in Florida. I'm so excited for it, but- um, the, the website as well just has inspiration for how you can like do electronics, like very low cost, not needing any kind of really specialized equipment, um, which is always fun. And then I have on, on my website, I think some people already, I, I showed at the beginning, but I went through pretty fast. So um, some of these, at least I do have instructions for. So a lot of these are, are based with, a, are uh, made with a micro bit. Um, but if you just want like some projects, like I've been really lucky and people have been sponsoring me to, to actually document these, which is great because then I can make everybody or give them to everybody else for free. Um, so yeah, um, so those are all just some great resources. Also, for those of you not on Twitter, uh, there's, a, or for those of you new to Twitter, there's a lot of people on Twitter all just doing amazing things. And that's how I've met a lot of people here um and just seeing what they're up to is always fun and uh and people will always post like different you know projects for inspiration or different like building challenges and stuff so yeah thank you jasmine awesome tips and links yeah and keep us tinkering for a while <gasps> and thank you, thank you <laughs> like for helping keep the conversation going because just me on my own i'd be like <laughs> I just I just got inspired by Cecilia because she used a piece of paper and two straws to make a, a cranking Ooh. mechanism. Ah. I, did, I, I don't have uh, any wire, so I use this the mechanism that Cecilia is using with her automata. You know, awesome. a square of cardboard and two pieces of skewers. That's See? great. 
Wow, and you could also use that, you know, if you wanted to do something not wind powered, you could use that as a handle as well to like- Yes, it's very sturdy. I put some hot glue in and it's very sturdy, you know? Ooh, oh, I'm starting to see things on the Padlet. Oh my gosh, this is, <laughs> is beautiful. Isn't it? I, it doesn't actually show who who made what, or it probably does, and I just don't know how to check it. No, you have to put your name. Larissa at the YouTube, she just said that she was wondering and imagining and uh, exhibit of all the productions, all these contraptions all together. <laughs> this will be amazing. Yeah, I mean, if people could keep posting to the Padlet, the other thing is, um, you know, maybe people can also share it on Twitter and tag it with, uh, I think the Brazil Maker Day 2021, is that the? Maker Day yeah, Brazil yeah. 2021. And also tag Jasmine. Oh yeah, that'd be great, because then I get to see it. <laughs> and Thomas Maker, we, we would love to see the final product, okay? Oh, and I think actually, because, uh, People were asking about doing things outside. I, it's hard to tell from the photo, but I think Tonya made one uh, that is using like a plasticky material maybe instead of paper. That or it's just very shiny paper. Um, but that's like a cool way to do it as well. Oh, and I'm seeing all the tickle bots. Oh. <laughs> Hello, mommy. They're saying. Hello, Hello. mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Bimo one. <laughs> uh here i'm putting the tag in for the the twitter maker day it's oh wow bom dia bom dia fantástica estou pronta para a próxima aventura quer dizer quase deixa eu ver uma desenhista uma astronauta professora de futebol uma doutora do coração ou todas em uma só eu tenho uma história eu posso viver todas aqui o meu futuro é do tamanho da minha imaginação one school educação infantil dos dois aos cinco anos What's going on, guys? <laughs> Alguém abriu a live e está com a áudio vazando para a gente. Isso é o começo da live. Oi, Jasmine. Oi, Jasmine. Oi, Jasmine. Nosso tempo já deu. Já deu. Our time is up, really? Yes, oh, God. sorry. Oh, it's like this. Every yeah. time we are having fun. I need more time because I was well, suffering thank here. Thank you, everybody, for I want to thank you all for attending and for, and for, and for uh, tinkering with me. Oh, my gosh. Tell me, we guess that you have a video going on on your, on your... Oh, on the YouTube. Well, thank you to the people the, the, the Zoom channel who can hear me. Danny and Cora, thank you so much for, like, helping, helping, you know, keep things going and stuff and just sharing what you're doing. Making it a lot more fun. <laughs> awesome. Guys, uh, can, can everybody check if we... Okay, okay, right, right. We got it. Okay, so we can say a uh, proper thank you, Jasmine, for having us, for teaching us all these amazing inspirational projects. And Ooh. yeah, we're going to be keep tinkering and posting on Padlet. So the conversation has just started. Thank you so, so much. It was a pleasure. Jasmine, thank you so much. We'd like to thank you as well. Uh, everybody that attended to those sessions, the two sessions today, the first one in the morning with Nathan and now with Jasmine. Thank you so much for joining us at YouTube or here at Zoom. 
You are awesome. Keep doing and keep sharing your projects with us. We'd love to see it, we and Jasmine. I put the link, uh, our tags at the, at the chat box on YouTube. I'm going to put the tag here at Zoom as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, the embassy. Uh, the United States Embassy in Brazil for supporting us with Maker Day. The embassy is supporting all the 24 binational centers that are running activities and experiences with uh, every with their community during this day. So check the program at Maker Day website. Thank you so much for our team to joining us here today on a Saturday. You are awesome, guys. Thank you. Without you, you can we can do nothing. Thank you, Wabi. Thank you, Sister Dani. Thank you, Vander. Hello, Vander. Thank you, everybody. See you. See you. Keep making Thank you, that. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Bye.